Why is every game dying? Every single game is dying. Your favorite game, it's fucking dead and you're stupid for playing it. The other game that you're excited for, it's gonna be dead soon anyway. Elden Ring? Well, it doesn't have a battle pass. Of course it's fucking dead. Here we go. If you've been paying attention over the past couple years to the world of video game reporting, you may have noticed a trend concerning the health of recent releases. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Halo Infinite Steam player count falls below Halo Master Chief Collection. Apex Legends revenue figures reveal massive drop in popularity. Star Wars Battlefront player count is poor, dominated by Fallout 4. New World has lost almost 90% of its players since launch. I love how like half of these titles were probably influenced to some degree by one of my videos. Like I, I feel like yeah, every single time the new world, like I would check the fucking player count for new world every fucking day and for Lost Ark every fucking day for Elden Ring every fucking day. Need I go on? Yeah. Okay. Realm Royale lost about 95% of its player base. The Division player count has that dropped 93%. Die. For Honor now has 95% of its player base lost, worse than Division 1. Anthem's player count paints a very grim picture. Lost Arc Peak players down 80%. Elden Ring concurrent player count has dropped dramatically, 90... almost 90% losses. Bro, like, if, if they had some more, uh, you know, maybe some honing in Elden Ring, maybe they had a battle pass, uh, you know, some uh, new bosses... Uh, you know, new skins that you're able to buy on the store, some shit like, I mean, they gotta, there's gotta be something, man. Is we are obsessed with concurrent player counts in Absolutely. games. Absolutely. Specifically, we're obsessed with how many people are leaving a game and how many people are still Absolutely. left. And it's not just games journalists and YouTubers looking to clickbait, although there is plenty of that for sure, but also just go to the forums or Reddit page of any game released in the past few years, do a quick search, and yeah. you are guaranteed to find plenty of threads talking about the number of people Absolutely. leaving the game game and raising the question is this game dead and if yes. you were to base your opinion on these discussions these articles and these youtube videos the yes. answer would always be yes dead the game. game is dead um every game in fact appears to be dead True. or dying True. so like okay what's going on here because that you know that doesn't make a lot of sense right well i think there's a lot of different elements that go into this fixation on player count but also mm -hmm. many reasons why we continue to see example after example of new game comes out is popular for a time but then loses 70 80 90 percent of its players shortly thereafter some of the reasons are simple like you know people just stop playing games but some of them are a little more complex and one assumption that i just want to clear up immediately Immediately is this idea that player count decline is a direct indication of a bad game. Just no, 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 it's not. It can be the consequence of a bad game. I think that, I think it depends on a lot of factors. So for example, people stopped playing New World because it sucked. They stopped playing it because it was a mindless grind fest that had no respect for their time. That, that's why. That's, that's the big reason. Uh, obviously, some games are going to go down. And also, it depends on the genre. I, I, I think that it's a, a good method of comparison, in my mind, is comparing games of a similar genre. So if you're comparing two MMOs, and one MMO lost half of its player base in six months, and the other one lost 95% of its player base in six months, I think you can probably make an assertion there. Uh, same thing with a lot of other games, but across uh, like different types of games. Sure. Yeah, it's harder to do that game if you release something that people are at first excited for and then they jump yeah. in and realize it's not so great yes they will leave That's and that true. is some of what is taking place here but yes. also it doesn't matter if a game is total trash or if it's fantastic most nearly every game actually will have a rather dramatic decline in player count eventually That's there are true. of course some exceptions games that come up and uh, post-launch will steadily grow fortnite was one such a case when epic Minecraft. released the battle 
Royale spinoff of their PvE Horde mode game in July 2017, not a lot of people were playing at first, but then, in the following months, it saw massive growth, becoming, at least for Among a time, like one of too. the biggest games in the world. But these are outliers, and yeah. not every game can have Fortnite, or Minecraft, or vanilla World of Warcraft levels of post-launch growth. Of and even like those this. that do, inevitably, see a decline as well. The record for yeah. largest peak player count ever recorded on Steam goes to PUBG. The That's game right. launched in March 2017, and then later that year, in December, reached a staggering peak of 3,236,000 concurrent players. Now, PUBG was so fucking fun back then. It was so fucking fun. Like, I, I am not gonna let it, like, it was absolute garbage. Like, don't get me wrong, people getting shot through a wall, desync, bugs, players dying, character movement was terrible, gun ballistics were fucked up half the time, but holy shit was it fun. Today, it is down nearly 90%. Pathetic, right? <laughs> well, yeah. no, not, not, not actually, game. because that still puts them at an average daily peak yeah, at roughly 350,000 concurrent players, which most days has PUBG still in the top five most yeah. played There's games on all of PUBG. Steam. So percentages can be deceiving. Like, yes, it has dropped 90%, but 90% of the highest recorded player count on the platform yeah. ever is still a very large number. And while we don't have Steam player- it, It's kind of like people, I remember whenever Ninja was like really popular and then like ninja would be getting like 60,000 or 40,000 viewers which like back then this was like at the top of twitch and and you would have people and they would be like wow bro ninja fell off bro ninja's like his stream is is dead bro like it's dead he only gets 60k viewers now remember back like he he played remember when he played with drake he had 600,000. now he's got 60,000. the guy is done he's irrelevant meanwhile he's still the most fucking popular gamer in the whole world at that point everybody knows who he is but because obviously things go down it changes he still gets a good amount now exactly uh but people look at it proportionally it's like somebody who has, you know, 10,000 viewers, they have 5,000 viewers, people are going to be like, wow, your viewer count, wow, your stream's dying, huh? But if somebody who has 1,000 viewers uh, has 5,000 one day, same number, uh, everybody's going to be like, wow, you're really on the come up. So I think it's about direction and trajectory more than uh, the number itself. Because people don't want to invest into a game that they feel is going to die numbers for every game we can use google trends as a barometer as imperfect yeah, as this may be it that. does give us a general sense of things for example take a look at minecraft which to date is the highest selling video game in the world ever it peaked in popularity in july Tetris 2013 was. which was okay. about two years after release it then progressively dropped down to an 80 percent decline which occurred in october 2018 and although it has started trending up since then it is still at the moment a mere 50 percent what it was at its peak we know from back when blizzard published yep. subscriber counts for world of warcraft that that, that game peaked time. at the end of wrath of the lich king in 2010 that was a solid six years of growth which is mm -hmm. very impressive but ever since then it has been a downward slide so as you can see even with amazing games, even with some of the biggest, yep. most popular titles in the world, they all follow the same trend of losing massive amounts of players over time. We just have example well, after- It's like you, you contextualize that. Like, I don't know about Minecraft. I don't really play Minecraft, but like PUBG, the reason why PUBG lost a lot of players is because other games like Fortnite came out that offered roughly the same type of gameplay without any of the baggage. You could get in and out of games faster. The gameplay itself was more smooth and better designed. It was more innovative than PUBG in general, and it just played better, and it was also free. So a lot of people moved over from PUBG to Fortnite. So you can say that it's like, oh, well, these things just kind of happen, but the truth is, is the reason why they happen is actually because of actions that the developers take or don't take. And I think that uh, WoW is the same thing. Uh, WoW, like in Cataclysm, whenever it lost subscribers, uh, I think that there are very easy, easy ways that you can say why those things happen same thing as warlords of draenor so yes obviously games will decline over time and that's not necessarily evidence of it being unhealthy but i think that at least with a lot of the games that we've seen and we talk about uh evidence for why that happens 
is evident inside of the game if you understand what happened with the game in the time that it was released. Example after example. In fact, I think a perfect recent showcase of this would be Elden Ring. While some people may argue Dead otherwise, game, this is way. clearly a great game. It is no doubt going to nope. make its way onto most top 10 lists Dead this game. year, and it's also bound to rake in many Game of the Year awards as well. This should be one of those titles that we can all point mm -hmm. to as one of the better games to come out in 2022. Nevertheless, there are currently a bunch of articles and YouTube videos pointing out the fact that the game has lost a significant number of players, which Dead is game. an accurate observation. Elden Ring peaked at about 953,000 concurrent players. Well, it's not an accurate observation at all. Uh, now, obviously, the, the reason why it's not completely accurate is because there are going to be a lot of people that play Elden Ring on console and you don't see them represented. However, I think that if you take a slice of an apple pie, the slice of the apple pie is still apple pie. And in the same sense, I do think that the player base of a PC Elden Ring is going to roughly mirror the player base of a uh, console Elden Ring as well. You see what I'm saying? Is this PC numbers only? Yeah, it's PC numbers only. But logically, you could assume that because the game is effectively the same on consoles as well, that it would have the same graph. You see what I'm saying? But also, like, Elden Ring is not a live service game. Elden Ring is a single-player game. Uh, you, you can't compare a live service multiplayer online game like World of Warcraft, Fortnite, Final Fantasy XIV, or New World. Uh, you, you can't compare that to Elden Ring on March 3rd, a week after it launched, and then a month later, that dropped down to 450,000 peak, and as Should've of today, pass, it sits guys. around 50,000 peak concurrent players, which is roughly a 95% decrease. Dead game, right? No, no, yep. not a dead game. Yep. It's just a game that a lot of people played and then finished, whether or not they completed the game or not, they played through it, they had their experience, and then they put it down, they moved on as is the natural progression for most games. On the flip yeah, I think that's what happens. There's a lot of people played the game, they beat the game, and then that's it. I actually... So, I'm going to be totally honest. I have three collector's editions of Elden Ring at my house right now. And I haven't given them to any of my friends because I don't think that they're worthy of getting these fucking collector's editions. These sons of bitches didn't even kill Margit. Like, my friend Eric, he killed Margit, and he got bored, and he didn't even finish the game. They're not worthy of getting the collector's edition of the game, and I'm holding it until finally I have somebody to give them to. You son of a yeah, I'm, I'm so fucking mad. Side, of course, though, we've got plenty of examples of bad games that see a decline in player count. Yeah. But that's just my point. Great game or bad game, most games will see a decline. It's really just a matter of when. And for bad games, that decline... It's a matter of when and also the degree. Uh, I, I think, like, if you look at Lost Ark, I think that most people would generally agree that Lost Ark is a better game than New World. And Lost Ark started with more players and it also retained more players because it's a better game is likely to happen a whole lot sooner okay so now that we've established that this is going to happen no matter what great games crappy yeah. games a decline is going to happen what's with the fixation why do we keep talking about these massive percentage drops why, why is it always not, brought up why is it used opinion. to reference and call games dead games it's let me touch fun. on this there was recently an article posted on one reason i don't i'm pretty sure you might not bring this up i don't know maybe he does is that it's good clickbait right elden ring dead game like, people are like, wait, what the fuck? Elden Ring was great! What the hell? You're telling me it's a dead game? That son of a bitch! What the hell does he say? What the hell is he saying? And so that's what it is, right? So, like, it, it's farming, it's farming doomers and, 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 and rage clickers, too. PC gamer titled fixating on player counts and dead games is making gaming worse. The main takeaway from this was pretty much that uh, we care way too much about player counts and we should instead just enjoy and play the games that we find fun regardless of how many other people are playing. And I agree. I think that's not really, I, I don't think that's, I, I, I'll wait for what, I, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that entirely.
agree to an extent. Like, I okay. agree that yeah. it shouldn't matter if there are 20,000 or 20 concurrent players in a particular game. If I am having a good time while I'm playing, that is what counts, right? Yes, of course. Back in the day when I went to my local Blockbuster to rent a copy of Metal Gear Solid, uh, like a full two years after this released, I had no idea or care for how many other people were playing yeah. simultaneously. And had today's trend of reporting on percent player count drops been a thing back then, almost certainly I would have seen headlines in a magazine like Metal Gear Solid, massive flop, 99% player count decline. And had I let that influence me and not rented the game, I would have missed out on one of the best gaming experiences of my life. Simi I think that most people that discuss player counts in the context of Elden Ring do it in illustrating the fact that Elden Ring's decline in player count is not indicative of the quality of the game. So I think that the reason why Elden Ring is connected to a lot of conversations surrounding player count is actually because it's used as evidence that player count is not an end-all and be-all for the quality of the game. The reason why people care about how many people are playing a game is that if the game is losing players, the game will probably continue to lose players. This is just the way that games are. Uh, people are herd animals in a lot of ways, and so as soon as they see other people quitting the game and playing something else, well, they're going to do the same thing. And if that happens to enough people, then the servers get shut down. And I think that people are looking for a forever game. And this is going to go into a certain degree of, I don't know, armchair psychology. But I think that a lot of people are looking for that forever game. They're looking for that game that they can play for the indefinite future that they can just invest themselves into and be really good at and not have to keep swapping between games. Like how many of you guys back in the day, a lot of you, you know, you're from my stream. And so like, your your wow players right like wow was your forever game and, and you would play wow and you would only play wow and you felt like everything that you were doing in the game mattered and it was like it, it had like a value to it because you never thought about whenever you weren't going to be playing wow because you just have always played the game and that's just always how it is and i think other people felt the same way with like let's say maybe call of duty halo i mean different franchises especially right it's not just one individual game and i think that's why people want to have that forever game they want to have that game that they've played for a long time that they are very experienced in. they know everything about they don't want to have to try to find a new game again right they want to find a game and get married to it that's effectively what it is and i think also so like if a game is dying and it's losing a tremendous amount of its player base it's not unreasonable to assume that more development resources will not be put into that game because the return on investment is just going to be minimal if you have a game that like almost nobody plays you bring in new content for the game well it's not going to really make that many people happy because there's not that many people playing it so i i think that's why people care about it because they want to play a game that other people are playing so their accomplishments in the game can mean something to more people so like if you have invincible people care about that but like if there are things that you have in like you know some older other like w w anything you had in wildstar for example any accomplishment you had in wildstar nobody cares or knows about anymore because the servers are gone so i i do think that that's why people care about player count and there is some legitimacy in it early today had i seen a 90 percent player count decline in elden ring as a sign that people didn't like the game and not played it i would have been doing myself a massive disservice yeah. so i agree that we shouldn't let player count declines necessarily determine if we are interested and wanting to play a game yeah. that should not be a primary factor however while i agree with that there is a big distinction to be made between that kind of game and these online only yeah. or games as a service titles exactly. because player counts and growth or yeah, single player games versus online concurrent like service games like like online service games are two different things Line, tends to tell a bit of a different story and have different implications here. Ones that are becoming ever more relevant for gamers as the years go on. Today's gaming landscape is very different from back when I went to Blockbuster to rent Metal Gear Solid. In 2022, a large proportion of all of the new games coming out each and every year that fall into the cool live thing. service, so games as a service, always online category. Games that require a constant internet connection and further support from 
from the developer to get all of their content and to even continue existing. They tend to follow yeah. a similar formula. They will launch with a base and promise continual support and additions over time. The game comes That's out. That's also another reason why people are excited about the Riot MMO is because Riot has had a very good track record of supporting League of Legends. They've had a very good track record of supporting Valorant. They support uh, Team Fight Tactics, wherever the fuck that game is. I don't play that. Uh, I, I don't play League either, but I mean, I played a lot of Valorant, or not a lot, but I played Valorant a bit. And um, I, I think that's why people get excited about certain different studios doing that, because they have kind of a established precedent for how they will treat a live service game. Out, it is more or less incomplete with the promise of completion coming later on. There will be a roadmap of regular planned updates, seasons that will bring in new content and progression goals, weekly events to keep you coming back, so on yep. and so on. This is the case in just about every genre. AAA FPS titles like Call of Duty, Apex Legends, and Overwatch. Looter shooters like Destiny, Division, and Warframe. You got the MOBAs, League of Legends, and Dota, MMOs, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, ESO, Guild Wars 2, so on and so on. But even games and genres you might not expect, like some mostly single-player RPGs, yeah, turn-based yeah. games, card games, nearly everything has become a live service that is tied to a... Well, like with PoE, it does matter how many people are playing the game because it'll change the prices on things. Like at the beginning of a league, pricing is way different than in the middle of a league server and promising that there will be more of the game to come. And for these titles, if there isn't an active player base spending money or new players yep. buying the game to fund further development, update plans might get delayed or even canceled altogether. That content roadmap that they launched with, if not enough people bought and are playing the game, just forget about it. It might as well have been a hallucination. So when a new game launches yeah. and the player base tanks, there is a significant chance that promises the developer made about what the game will include later it's down the road they are going to change and for this, this happened with wad like i i genuinely believe that blizzard had a lot more plans with warlords of draenor but because the expansion was received so badly they just scrapped it and they moved on to legion i think this is also probably what happened you know people say like jar jar binks was supposed to be a sith lord i looked at some of the evidence for it and i find it to be substantial i think that it's true and so you, you do have, I mean, and this is not, the, what, the reason I made that example is like, I think that this is not something that's exclusive to video games. If people see that, uh, it, it, no, look at the, watch the videos. I didn't, I thought it was bullshit too until I watched the videos. Uh, it, it's, no, it, it's legit. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, I, I think that it's, it's substantial for anywhere, right? They're going to redirect the game if it's not going well or it's not going over well with, with the audience reason, it is probably best not to purchase a game based on what is promised to come, but based on what is currently in the game. But it's also for that reason that I think players are so keenly interested and constantly talk about concurrent player counts. But yeah. not getting like some future promise updates or content patches or DLC or expansions, that's one thing. Even worse is games just getting shut down. Being a lifelong yep. fan of like MMOs, I have seen and this Wildstar. a lot. Games that I've had an absolute blast playing over the years like Wildstar, there Warhammer Online, Firefall, EverQuest Next Landmark, all of these and many more are dead. But not like, LOL, the player base is dropping, haha, dead game, rip, XD. Yeah, no, like dead. literally dead, as in they don't exist anymore. In most cases, yep. of course, this happened because the game didn't have a large or active enough player base to fund and sustain the game's development. That's and sad. yeah, this has been occurring in the MMO space for a long time. We are used to it. But recently, in the past few years, it has started to creep into other more mainstream parts of gaming as these always online titles in other genres have reached the end of their financially viable to keep afloat cycle. Just yep. last month, Ubisoft announced plans to shut down online services for 15 of their games. These include five Assassin's Creed titles, Far Cry 3, Splinter Cell Blacklist, really Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands, and a handful of others. And we've seen some other very high profile examples of games from big studios shutting down in recent years. Epic shut down Paragon in 2018. 2K shut down. I don't know if he's going to use this example, but Heroes of the Storm is all but shut down. 
like they effectively shut down Heroes of the Storm. They're not developing the game anymore, hardly at all. Uh, it's just on maintenance mode. And why did that happen? I think that if Heroes of the Storm was as popular as League of Legends, it would not have happened. It's because people didn't play it. Down Evolve in 2018. 2K also shut down Battleborn in 2021. We saw Ubisoft shut down Hyperscape in 2022. There's also a long list of games that, while technically not shut down, might as well be. Valve's Artifact is a great example of this. I mean, it is oh, as good as dead. And that's just covering some of the AAA examples from these massively successful developers and publishers yep. that everyone knows about. The list of AA and indie and early access games that have just vanished from existence over these past People five or so years, it is very large and it is yeah. ever growing. So when a game comes out and we see an immediate decline in players, I think that is a genuine cause of concern for people. Is the game going to knock at the support that they're saying it's going to get? Or worse yet, is the game going to shut down? People are worried about this and rightfully so. And along these same lines, when it comes to- yeah, People don't want to invest all of their time and effort and energy into a game that's a sinking ship that that's really what it is and, and this is especially true with like rpgs and mmos nobody wants to start playing a game that is dying because th it, it's a dying game i mean all of your time is going to eventually not matter and it's mattering to a shrinking amount of people and that's it player counts, it has something to say about the health of a game. Just like review yeah, exactly. scores and user scores, player count is another metric that people are using to help determine, is this game good and is it worth checking out? As we've covered, it is of course natural for people to stop playing every game eventually, but especially for games that are designed to be played over longer periods of time and built to be logged into every day, like the developer, the publisher, they are designing these games for people to come back day in and day out. Yep. How much and how quickly a player base drops in these titles is noteworthy and a clear indicator of an issue for potential players. If a new MMO launches and loses 90% of its player base in a single month, that tells a story. It could be that the game is having a lot of server issues, people can't log in so they stop trying. It could be that the game is full of bugs, glitchy, laggy, or it could be that it's simply not fun to play and after giving- Or it could be all of the above at a shot, people quit sooner than later. Or let's say we've got a game that comes out, numbers are strong, they grow yeah. even initially in the first couple of weeks, but then they start heavily declining after a month or two. End this could be sucks. an indication that the late or the end game content is sucks lacking. Dick. Player count is yes. just one factor. Like you, you don't get the entire story just by looking at these numbers. But if you take player count and you add in player experience, the discussion that's happening online around these games, exactly. then it starts to paint a picture of what the larger issues yeah. may be and what could be causing player decline beyond that natural drop that every game even the best games in the world all see and that i think also uh elden rings elden rings player base is going to go up probably in about six months or so i think that you'll start to see the player base go up because at that point there will be enough mods generated for the game that people that are hardcore players and like fans of the game and that type of game, they will be able to go through the mods. It's the same as with Dark Souls 3. What kept Dark Souls 3 alive until Elden Ring is that Dark Souls 3 was the foundation that every modder made their Dark Souls version of the game off of. So, you know, you had the Convergence mod, you had the Hollow mod, you had Daughters of Ashes Dark Souls 1, but uh, you had uh, Cinders, and, and I played through a lot of these. And I think that that's a big reason why Elden Ring will continue to grow is that people will be able to mod the game and people can play the modded versions. I know there's already a convergence mod for Elden Ring that's been being worked on. Uh, it's been months now. It's been worked on. And so whenever that comes out and other people start modding and changing the game, that's whenever you'll actually see more content. And also whenever inevitably DLC comes out for Elden Ring as well is interesting for the current as well as the potential players. And then there's just the fact that 
everything is vying for our attention and there is way too much of all of it. There yeah. are too many live service games that want us playing every day, all day. And with how gaming is at the moment, I think much of the fixation on active player count just stems from people not wanting to waste their time or their money. As yeah. much as you can just enjoy a game for what it is in the moment, there is a big draw for a lot of people to spend their time on something that they will last. Like I really thing. enjoyed yeah. Firefall. It wasn't perfect, but I had fun playing over the course of a few years years. Firefall no longer existing doesn't take away the fun that I had, but on the other hand, there's a functionally infinite number of games that I haven't played, more games than I will ever play in my lifetime that I could True. have played. So would my time have been better spent not on Firefall, but say, playing Final Fantasy XIV? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Like with anything in life, making a decision to do one thing is- I don't really think so. I think that's a personal decision. I don't think that anybody can decide that other than you. Like, for example, I, I played a lot in, like, the New World beta and, and, and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun playing that. That was It was enjoyable for me. It's not like I, I didn't like it or I was... Uh, I feel like I wasted my time. Like, I put a 1,000 hours into New World, and I don't feel like I wasted... Well, I probably wasted a few hours. But I, I don't feel like I wasted a lot of that time. It's the same thing as Lost Ark or WoW. Like, I, I've... And, and like if they shut down the server or my character gets deleted or something like that, I'll still have those memories, the screenshots. It's the same thing with BDO. Like I, I, I stopped playing BDO like maybe two months after it came out, three months after it came out. And so I, I haven't played it. Like I remember back then the level cap was 55. And, and all you would do was you would farm these, uh, it was like a like these monks or like these priests and it was like Cafalon or some I don't remember the fucking name but I remember I got level 55 in that game I, I was in the best guild and I quit the fucking guild and I had so much fucking fun in that game and it doesn't matter if I don't play it anymore because I enjoyed it whenever I did a decision to not do literally everything else. So choosing to spend time playing one game means not spending that time playing any of the other games. Yep. That is just a fact of being alive and having to make choices. Calcum. And I think yeah. with that, there is a natural fear people have to not want to spend their time doing something that they feel in the end was a waste. Although I don't believe that experiencing a game that gets shut down or loses further development and functionally becomes abandoned, I don't believe it becomes a waste if it's no longer playable, but I do understand the aversion. And like I said, there is a long list of factors that go into this fixation that we have with concurrent player accounts and whether or not a game yeah. is dead or dying. And I imagine what we've touched on here is just one facet of the entire picture. And as more- And, and I, I do think that there's also people that are just fucking hype beasts. Like I, I've talked about a lot of the legitimacy behind it, but there's also just hype beast viewers that they only watch streams that have a lot of viewers. They only play games that have a lot of players. They only watch movies that have high reviews. They only do things that are popular. They only wear clothes that, you know, have name brands on them. There's just hype beasts. Like, I mean, that that's definitely true, too. So not all of this mindset is, is logical. Some of it is just fucking hype beast behavior time passes and more great games release all in competition with each other for our time <laughs> this isn't going to get any better we are going to keep fixating on player counts on yep. discussions around forums and articles all of this this isn't 2004 you know when wow came out and there were like one or two other good mmos to potentially play nowadays there are hundreds well it was though because like everybody focused on the player counts back then too like, that's the thing, is that that's one of the reasons why it's just that WoW's player count was going up, so everybody was positive about it. But they, they focused on the, the player counts of the other games. They focused on the player counts of, like, uh, you know, I, uh, no, a fucking uh, EverQuest, and they focused on the player counts of uh, Warhammer Online and Lord of the Rings Online. It, they did, and that's why they stuck with WoW. Major if not thousands, like, yeah, if not hundreds too. of thousands of great games that we could City just boot up right now and play instead. And that list will just keep on growing with time. So there are tough decisions to be made and looking at reviews and everything around games. Mm -hmm. And yes, looking at active player counts and noting their decline. 
and how quick that decline happens, this is all factored into the decisions that we're making on what games to play and what games to spend our time on. And there you go. That is going to do it for this video. This was fun, a little bit different than my usual fare, yeah. but nevertheless, I had a good time. I, I hope you enjoyed video. it. It's kind of fun diving into a topic like this. Thank you guys so much as always for watching. Hope you enjoy the content. I'll see you in the next one. All right. Take it easy. Yeah, I, I think this is a good video. Uh, he, he brought up a lot of points that I think make a lot of sense, and I, I in general, agree with pretty much everything that he said. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, give it a like if you, if you enjoyed the video. Force Gaming, we've watched a lot of his videos. We'll probably watch this at some point very soon. Maybe tomorrow. It depends. I'm not sure yet.